This year's MasterCard Spending Plus Pulse holiday forecast is once again predicting some record-breaking holiday sales. MasterCard credits a stable economy and low unemployment for high consumer confidence. Joining us right now with more on this is Steve Sadoff. He is the former Sachs chairman and CEO. He's currently a senior advisor for MasterCard. Also joining us are our guest host, Dana Telsey. She's the CEO and chief research officer at Telsey Advisory Group. And Jan Niffen, who is the CEO of J. Rogers Niffen. Uh, Steve, we just heard from the National Retail Federation in the last hour talking about how they're looking for up 3.8 to up 4.2 percent. Both Dana and Jan thought, oh, man, we'd take the high end of that. So what are you anticipating? What's, what are you seeing out there? And let's talk this through with Dana and Jan, uh, with Dana and Jan too. Well, I think the MasterCard spending pulse numbers calling for in the 3.5% range, which is very similar to the National Retail Federation. It's a healthy consumer. Last year, you saw some very good numbers coming out of the MasterCard uh, database. You had a little bit of a conflict between the government numbers and some of the MasterCard spending numbers. I think it was a very healthy holiday season last year. Probably not going to be quite as healthy as it was last year, 3.5 to 4 versus 5 last year. But overall, we see a good consumer. Don't believe that we've seen much of an impact on the tariffs yet. That's still to come if, in fact, it were to happen. But overall, I'm feeling good about what I'm seeing with the consumer. Steve, you've always talked about omni-channel and how important it is, how yeah. retail is evolving. What are you seeing this holiday season that will be different than holiday seasons past regarding convenience? Well, I think the, day, the sort of the reporting that you just saw is telling the story. Omnichannel is critical. Consumer wants the product anywhere, anytime they want to get it, and fast. And the companies that have made the investments in the infrastructure, in the shipping, in the analytics are the ones that are winning right now, and it's getting faster and faster, and the consumer's changing faster than some of these uh, uh, legacy companies. Jim, what do you think? Steve, who do you think's winning and losing here? I keep talking about Walmart and Target and Best Buy being the kind of winners, these big box guys. But how do you see that shaking out as far as what, what we see going forward and who gets hurt the most by the tariffs? Well, I think starting with you have the big boxes that you talk about are winning. You also have categories that are winning and losing. This year, apparel is having a weaker performance. Uh, the electronics, the hardware, the jewelry are performing uh, quite well. Clearly, the big box players within that are doing uh, the best. I think that some of these... Uh, uh, digitally native brands. We talked earlier about the digitally native brands that are opening up a lot of stores. They're winning. The resale is winning. The rental is winning. Uh, and I think these niche specialty brands that offer a unique story, they're winning. They have a sustainability story. That's winning. It's the legacy companies that haven't evolved that are having a tough time adapting to this environment are the ones that are losing. Hey, Steve, I, I feel like we've been talking about how apparel is having a rough holiday season for at least the last 20 years. Have I missed out on something? Or is well, last year, really actually, market? Ta uh, well, apparel last year actually had a pretty good year. It was up 6 7%. So you saw a slowdown uh, over the course of the year. Fast fashion is not doing well anymore. Like I think that the younger, uh, you know, the younger consumer uh, is not as much into stuff. Forever They're into 21. experiences. So you saw the Forever 21 bankruptcy example. Mm -hmm. So the experience is becoming more important, uh, the specialness of product. So I, I do believe that you see a shifting taste. The luxury category has shifted as well. You don't see as much growth out of luxury. Be a lot of it driven because of the experiential economy. Doesn't mean that individual brands aren't doing well. Jan made a very good point earlier that when you talk about department stores, for example, those aren't necessarily perceived as brands like a Louis Vuitton or a Prada or a Gucci. Uh, so you're seeing a consumer wanting convenience, they want value, they want experience, and they still want differentiated product. Companies that are delivering against all of those dimensions are doing extremely well. Jan, what, what, what was your thought just in terms of the tariffs, who this could hurt or not hurt? Are we going to see some retailers that actually have profitable sales and others who don't because of those tariffs? Well, I was going with where Matt Shea was a while ago when he was talking about it because when I look at it, I say big players with great supply lines are going to win. Smaller players without the ability to really push the supply line, they're going to lose and the market share is going to move to Amazon, Walmart and Target. I say all the time right now, if you're not one of those three, 
you're probably losing market share unless you're a very small niche player of some sort. And I also say all the time, and I still think this is true, online, off price, off mall, discount, rental, resale, and local mm -hmm. are winning. On mall, full price is dead. Hey, Steve, very quick last question. If something happens that the tariffs are, the additional tariffs on December 15th do get put on, would that change your outlook for, for what you're anticipating this holiday season? Because it does sound like you're, you're expecting the consumer to be pretty healthy. It, it would affect me in terms, I think that the tariffs, if they come on, is another tax on the consumer. The consumer is two thirds of the U.S. economy. I think there's some fragility there, and we've got to be very careful about doing things that hurt the consumer. Jan is right. The big guys will fare better, but overall, a tax is a tax.